Check, check. One and two. Excellent. Happy end of the last day of conference. <laughs> We're all feeling the effects, I think. I'm getting a little tired. Um, I believe you all know me, but I'm Dina from ASAP Accounting and Payroll. Uh, this is really designed as like an open forum round table. We're gonna talk about questions in li anything, live trust, uh, and try to get you some answers. So if you guys wanna like come closer, we can all sit together, or we could stay spread out. I mean, maybe this is like how we're supposed, to, this is the new normal. I don't know, right? <laughs> we're socially distancing. Um, so feel free though, if you wanna like come in a little closer. So I have, from my team at ASAP, I have Joelle here with me. And so Joelle and I do trust accounting and uh, live trust for several clients. We work in it every single day. We've seen a lot, we've gotten, we've received a lot of questions. Joelle's frantically trying to remember all the questions that we get, so maybe we could cover some of those today too if we need extras. Um, and I believe there was a question box by the registration table. And so Christina from Live Res just ran down to go make sure we grab those questions too. Um, but we'll try to you know, get to everybody's questions and go over all things Live Trust, or I can just talk to you about Live Trust for an hour if you want. I'm good at that too. Um, but I know we have one question and I remind me I'm supposed to repeat your question. I'm bad at that. Great question. So she's asking me every month when they pay the owner out, if best practice would be to just put it over and in the QuickBooks file or in your accounting operating system, uh, how to record that as just one big lump sum or break it out into the different income accounts and what my recommendation or what the best practice is. Did I get your question? Did I understand correctly? Okay, absolutely. Uh, as you get bigger, you're gonna wanna be able to make good business decisions based on the income and how you earned it. And so I would absolutely split it out into the different income accounts that you've set up, the but categories that you've set up. Um, and I try to make my categories in QuickBooks match my categories in LiveTrust. So as I'm setting them up, I want to, you know, what makes sense to me? 
right? I want to make sure that I'm recording my processing fees separate so that I know that I'm collecting enough to cover my merchant fees, right? I want to know that I'm charging enough for my cleaning fees to cover what my cleaning expenses are. That's important uh, for down the road. So that's how I like to do it. Uh, I do, and just as an FYI, maybe everybody knows this, but I like to use bill pay for the manager disbursements. Um, so you process your bill pay and then you click on the payments link above that and you get a great, so you're gonna filter all of the payments are there, everything, and you're gonna filter it and find your payment to yourself. Click on payment details. And we're, so we're not as scientific as, as what Darby is, but um, we basically do that one exercise that at the beginning of our season because the then we project it, out um, for the season and, and then great. we do our hiring. And, and of course, of course. Like an opening balance? No, that's, it's a really great question. So she's saying, uh, technically, if you run an inflow outflow report at the end of the month, it should match what that payment report is for the manager. So if you use your filters, do inflow and outflow, uh, it should match the payment report by category. You should be able to do, use Excel, export that report to Excel and use that to categorize your, your revenue as it was made. Uh, and I think you're right. I want to, you know, I don't work for a live res. I think you're right, it should. Uh, and I would wonder why too, but absolutely your statement is 100% correct and that's what I'm gonna go off every time. Okay, great. Yeah, Ruby? I would 100% recommend that you pay yourself to your operating account and transfer the money from your, I know. But you wanna use that for your operating income, right? For your, your operating account and your QuickBooks file or whatever your accounting system, that's, that's how you're gonna keep running your business. Right. Do you, it is all about interest. Interest is great. So she's asking if you have to do the whole disbursement at the end of the month or if she could just leave most of it in the trust account and transfer over what she needs to her operating account as she needs it. It's really hard to actually or to accurately track what you are earning each month in the month that you're earning it. You won't be able to have the side-by-side -side September of 2020 compared to September of 2021 income report because you're not transferring the total amount that you've earned in that month. I know. <laughs> any other questions right off? Thoughts on any of that? Yeah, so uh, at ASAP, I tend to like harp on people not using a miscellaneous expense, miscellaneous revenue in live trust, because then when you're making that transfer to yourself, you end up with this bucket of money that's miscellaneous, and it doesn't mean anything. Miscell you can't make good informed business decisions on miscellaneous anything. And so what we end up doing 
is going through everything that's in a miscellaneous account and putting it into the correct category. Uh, it takes a long time. I would recommend you do that. But as you find things that maybe are mapped to a miscellaneous account, uh, you might want to go to those line items and map them to a category that makes more sense to you in your business. Also, like now they're offering this really sweet, I don't know if you guys know this, but really sweet summary at the bottom of the owner statements by category. It's in your preferences. You can turn it on and it'll show up at the bottom of your owner statements uh, summary by category. And I promise you, if you have a category in that summary that says miscellaneous, your owners are going to call you and say, what does that mean? What's in that bucket? And so you just get rid of miscellaneous. Make sure everything makes sense. Your category should make sense to you and your owners. Good. Any questions on that? Yep. So you use bill pay instead of using the disperse funds button, and that's fine. Either way is fine. Uh, I would want to clear my bills either way, so it's good that you're using the bill pay at all. Um, but she, what she's saying is she only publishes her owner statements. And so when you only publish your owner statements, that leaves the other stakeholders' balances subject to change after you've closed a month. So if something gets updated, it will update your owner statement in the current open month, but it's going to update the manager statement in whatever month that happened, or the tax authority statement in whatever month that that happened. Um, and so all what you want is that hard close, right? When you close a month, you've paid out all of your stakeholders by publishing the statements. It, you're eliminating the chance of any numbers changing after the fact, after you've closed a month. Right, no, I've seen it both ways. So what she's asking is uh, when you date things, uh, if you're closing a month, do you want to date the bill payment or the disbursement for the last day of that month or are you going to date it for the day that you actually pay it? Uh, when I run my balance sheet, when the month is all done and I've closed everything, I don't want to have huge liabilities showing up to my owners. I don't owe them money anymore. I paid them for that balance, right? So I like to date it the last day of the month previous, but I have seen people date it the day they pay it, and if you can explain that, so if somebody were to ever audit that, and you could say, see, this owner had this balance of $1,000 on the end of the month, but I paid them $1,000 on the 8th, so it's on their next statement, maybe that's fine, uh, but my preference is to keep it on the month uh, that it's for, so that when you run your balance sheet, you're, you know, you're really balancing those uh, liabilities that you have on your balance sheet as low as possible. And Correct. And, yep, and tax authorities. So when you pay your tax authorities on the 20th of September, I date it August 31st. Yep. Any other questions? Was there a question box, Christina? No. Okay. No topics. It's just open forum. So if you have live trust questions at all, some people are here to absorb what questions other people have, and some people have questions okay. they want to ask.
Mm -hmm. It's interesting lingo, right? So she's asking about in the bill pay section uh, that w you can do pull downs and on the side so you can choose from vendor. It's vendors the default. You'll always see your vendors when you first go to bill pay. But you can choose the other stakeholders from the from the drop down. And when you choose one, then you'll notice that there's a tab for bills and then a separate tab for credits, okay? So the bills are the income to that stakeholder. Bills are income going to that stakeholder's button or bucket. And the credits are the expenses or the money taken out of the bucket, the money that goes away from that stakeholder. So if you do disbursements on the statements, that's a credit. It's gonna reduce their income, right? So you end up with, and Sina touched on this if you took any of her classes, but you end up with, uh, in your bill pay section, just like gobs and gobs and gobs of bills and several credits if you never use bill pay. It starts getting cluttered. And so once every so often, you wanna clear those out. So if you use the disbursement button on statements to pay out your stakeholders, then every so often you wanna go into the bill pay and you'll select all of the credits and all of the bills and end up with a zero dollar total because you've already paid them out with the disbursement. Make sure you don't go in there and just select the bills because you'll pay them out again. So you want to make sure those credits are, pay are selected too. So right now, I feel like I just need to clear my account. Yeah. I get, it doesn't come to zero. Doesn't so that, zero. that stakeholder probably has a balance. And should I be trying to clear out just from public statements back? Correct. And so if it's not a zero total, do I still clear it out? Or? No, so the minute you click that you're going to pay that, it's going to affect your cash balance. It's going to go to your cash register. It's going to try to be reconciled. And so if it's a number other than zero, then you're affecting your cash balance that's going to want to be reconciled. And you're saying clear your bills. Clear your bills. So basically I can't do, I couldn't do it today. Well, you can do it through August 31st. You can do it through, so you, but then you change your filter on both the bills tab and the credits tab so through I'm August 31st. So, Joel, can you talk her through this? To clear your bills and your credits? I would do it through the last time you published statements. So, uh, you don't want to do it by month. Just do it one time and clear them all. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you're, and Joel can show you too, but on your bills, so on the bills tab, there's a date filter, and you click that. You click the filter for bills, and you choose date through September 30th. Then you click on the credits tab and do the same filter so that both your bills and your credits are filtered through. Yep. Everybody understand that? Yeah, and then it should equal zero. I'm Joelle will come show you. She's gonna come sit with you. Yep. So I Well, um, it could be. I don't. I don't know that it, your inflow outflow should match your your manager disbursement. It should. I don't do it, no, I don't. The inflow outflow or. Yeah. So you can. It's just decluttering your system. Honestly, if they stay there forever, it's not going to hurt anything, but it keeps your system clean by clearing out all of the bills and credits that are sitting in the bill pay section. All right, next question. Yeah, sure. So 
Joel's asking about the differences between adjustments and expenses. Um, I personally will only use adjustments if I need to affect the cash. So an adjustment's like a journal entry in your operating system. So you have a debit and a credit, right? I'm only gonna use that if I'm affecting the cash. If I need to transfer funds from one stakeholder to another stakeholder, this owner owes the manager money for management fees, for recycling, whatever. I'm gonna use an expense. I, expenses look nice on statements. You can do it by property, which owners love, so they might call you someday, and I have three properties, and I really wanna know what the expenses are for this property. If you've used expenses and you've been consistent, that's gonna be the best in way to create that report, and it's gonna look the best on their statement. Yep, cool. I think I saw another question. Sure, so she's asking what reports she should print out every month. Um, I want to mention, so I, ha I have a client in Arizona. Is anybody in here from Arizona? I have a, a client in Arizona. The Arizona Real Estate Commission requires you fill out a three-way reconciliation form that you keep printed in your office in case they ever walk in your door, they want to see it. Super cool. It is a uh, form AUD-101. If you aren't in Arizona, you can still use this form for your own bookkeeping. Uh, but what you're gonna use are your balance sheet. You're gonna use a detail by stakeholder balance sheet. So if you wanna see this on that report, you're gonna say I have a liability of X amount of dollars due to my owners. And then you have to attach it, the detail of what each owner is owed. So that's a detailed balance sheet by stakeholder. And so you'll have a bucket of money that's due to your owners and you want a list of all your owners and their balances. A bucket of money due to vendors, you want to list all your vendors and what's due to them. That's a great report, both the balance sheet and the detail by stakeholder. You also want your reconciliation report. And then your liability detail report attached to that too will show what the accounts receivable and your advanced deposits are for your guests, so that if you run the liability detail report and attach it to that as well. Okay. Those ones, that, that's not a lot, it just sounds like a lot. So balance sheet, balance sheet deta detail by stakeholder, uh, reconciliation report, and your liability detail report. Those are monthly. Good question. And I don't know if they would care if you did it like as a PDF and saved it in the cloud in a file somewhere. Uh, and then they walked in the door and you're like, here it is. I mean, we don't want to print that much anymore, right? So hopefully they would take electronic copies. I haven't read it that close. Hey, Ruby. So you're doing it between owners? No, no, just on your own statements. You know, you're, you say your days and then on your statements, you say, I'd like your adjustments. You got to report how you, how you do them. I mean, can't I put the two down there for the extra charges, you know, and, and, and then, you know. Who, do you give it to the manager, take it from the manager then? Or do it from the manager. I'm asking how you currently do it for the penny. Oh, Oh, you do a change fee. Oh, on the reservation itself. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Is it, oh, that is okay. So that goes to the manager as like a processing fee, or, you know. Because it really is one thing to put the charge. It's just like an overshort. Yeah, overshort. Okay. Yeah. So she was saying sometimes on a reservation it's a penny off. Honestly, I usually adjust... Um, the processing fee, or integration host fee, depending on if it's Airbnb, I adjust something like that by the penny to get it to balance out. 
Yeah, I try, I try to just keep it very simple uh, to adjust for the penny. Uh, but you don't have to do that in live trust at all. You can do it right on the reservation. Yeah. Next question. Yeah, so, and they're made inactive. Interesting. So it used to be, and maybe LiveRes made this adjustment because of some issues. I haven't noticed it, but it used to be when an owner left, a lot of partners would go in and make that owner inactive. And then eight months later, they would run their 1099s, and that owner would not get one. So they should have gotten one for the first few months of the year. Yep, that is prop. So I bet they made some kind of release update. Yeah, I don't know. There, I did notice. Justice is going to know the answer to this question. Uh, inactive owners on the 1099 list. It used to be if they were inactive, they didn't show up. Now they're all showing up. Can can they select the show up in live trust? Make that a no. Like there's some setting in on the owners. There's some way to fix it. Right? Yep, there is under 600 on the right. Yes, so there is a radio button that says, you know, don't show any that's under six. So that threshold, and then that they wouldn't show up that way. Great, thank you. So um, that made it super clear. And next question. I do want to mention one thing yesterday. We were helping with somebody with their reconciliation. Uh, they hadn't reconciled in a long time. They were trying to get it caught up. We were going over some deposit grouping, and there was a deposit from January, sorry, a payment from January that was not on their live trust register. And she said, this happens all the time. So one first thing, make sure you're doing your deposit grouping at least once a week. If you do it daily, You'll love your. You'll be so much happier than trying to do it once a month, um, but you'll catch them faster, and it's easier to deal with these if you catch them right away. So if they don't show up on Live Trust and they're on the reservation, you have to do a force reprocess. And so then it showed up magically, force reprocess. But that owner is going to be like, "What is wrong with my statement?" Because now there's a reversed entry on their current statement. So when you're cleaning all that stuff up from a long time ago, you might just let your owners know that they might see some wonky stuff on the current statement, but going forward they don't see it anymore because you'll do your deposit grouping more regular. So that was a good thing to see. Yeah? Do you not have You should only be hitting force reprocess if something isn't showing up in live trust the way it should be. So you, act, you want it to force it through. Or if you've uh, done some mapping changes, so you've changed your line items, and you need those mapping changes to affect that reservation. I would not use the force reprocess as an everyday practice. Interesting. Yeah. So I try update first, just update without it. And then go into the go into the actual Correct. There's been an update. Yay, thank you, Libras. <laughs> So,
So Justice, I'm just going to repeat because it's a good point. Justice is saying best practices. You post a payment, and then you want to go to the bottom of the reservation and update it. So whoever is posting payments in your system, make sure they know after the payment is posted to go all the way down to the bottom of the reservation and hit update. Sometimes you don't have to update, and it shows up. But if you make it best practice to just do that every time, chances are it's going to be there, and everything will work out. Yeah. It does. Good question. So she was asking with the automatic payments, does it automatically update the whole reservation? And it does, yes. Good question. I would find occasionally with Airbnb payments, it doesn't automatically update. But if you're deposit grouping every day, you notice that right away. And all you have to do is go in and update, and then it shows up. To do an Airbnb refund? Right. So you're asking about like actually refunding the guest on Airbnb? Yeah, so your Airbnb uh, refunds are interesting. Those are an interesting way. But there's an option on your reservation where you're going to do whatever that refund amount is, but then you have to go into Airbnb and actually refund the guest in Airbnb. No. No. Sorry. Did I get that wrong? Yeah, I got it right. Yep. Okay. Next question? Anybody? I do find um, people don't spend quite enough time paying attention to the uncleared transactions when you're reconciling, you're finished reconciling, your difference is zero. Spend some time going through the ones that you didn't check off. Uh, any checks that you've written out of your system, expenses that you've written that are more than 30 days, or sorry, 60, 90 days old, 90 days, three months, those ones you want to start reaching out to whoever you wrote that check to and see if they didn't receive it. Maybe it's lost in the mail. Do you need to reissue? Something's wrong, right? That money still belongs to them. You've got to get it to them somehow. Any deposits that haven't cleared, you want to make sure, uh, where, you want to find out where that money is. True story. Doing a reconciliation for a new client, catching it up. It hadn't been done in a long time. And uh, I started noticing a pattern of the VRBO deposits not clearing. They didn't clear, they didn't clear, they didn't clear. Reached out to the client, hey, your VRBO deposits aren't clearing. I don't think you're getting money from them. So for years, VRBO was keeping their money. But because they hadn't reconciled, she didn't know that. And $40,000 later, they caught up their deposits. That's a lot of money. VRBO kept. They needed some information, but didn't reach out and say, hey, we need this information. So watch your uncleared payments. I want to know where that money is. Also, sometimes we've heard a few times people will move guests. They'll cancel one reservation, move the guests, create another reservation. They do a refund. They post a payment to move their funds. So that affects your live trust register. You can group those two together right away, and then when you're reconciling, clear the zero, right, deposit or zero dollar transaction. Or when you're finished reconciling, sort by name. You can click on the name column, it'll sort by name. And you can just go down through your list and watch for the same name where you have an in and an out for the same amount that didn't clear, and clear them both. So just a best practice tip. I see a lot of that. And honestly, there are a lot of uncleared transactions out there that just sit there. These are affecting your trust balance. This means that the balance on your balance sheet in Live Trust is not correct. So those are pay a lot of attention to those. Any other questions? Inflow outflow tax report questions? Liability detail report. Anybody have some fun stories about clearing your liability detail report?
on the liability detail report. How do you clear yours? What do you do? Correct, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of times they're saying a lot of times in the liability detail, does everybody in here clear their liability detail report regularly? So some, I see some maybe not so much, but I see some people hiding. Yeah, I cannot stress to you how important it is to make sure you keep your liability detail report cleared right now. And I'm saying this because someday down the road, that's gonna come back to haunt you, and you're gonna be like, oh, now I have to tackle this. Well, guess what? Every one of those reservations that you have to update and clear and balance, it affects the owner statements. And then your owners are like, why does my statement look so ugly? So I cannot tell you how important it is. Liability detail reports should be done once a week. Adjustments, yeah. Uh-huh. They requested some extra funds, and you're like, where does this go? That's how you figure it out? Yeah, great. It's going to be a headache one time, and then going forward, you're going to have it right, but you do want your trust account in balance, so it will be a headache one time. Maybe one email to your owners that's like, hey, I'm doing some work to this liability detail report that requires me to update reservations that have already cleared. It will make your owner statements look interesting, but I promise it all balances out. And everyone, I've had multiple people reach out to me that's like, hey, this looks ugly, the math is wrong, and any time I look at it, I'm like, oh, that math is right. Yeah. So sorry. <laughs> Usually it ends up with a net zero, and it should on these cases, because you're not going to change the rent to balance out any of these reservations. I'm sorry, but if you have reservations on your liability detail report from two years ago that have balances on them, you're covering that. Yeah. So you're not changing the rent. You're not going to reduce the rent to be like, oh, we're going to share this expense. <laughs> Your owners will be angry. <laughs> right. They will see. An, a, it, so what it does is it reverses all of the income from their original payout and then pays it out again on the current statement because everything else is published. We want it published. We don't want anything to change in the past. We want it closed. That's the proper way to do accounting, right? And so if you just one time send an email to all of them, you might see this, this is why it's happening, but don't change the rent, then it... That would be your goal. I mean, unless your email says, over the next six months, I'm going to be <laughs> updating this. <laughs> Stop by and get our card. I mean, when <laughs> if Justice doesn't have time, you can reach out to ASAP. We do help with liability detail reports if you're interested. I mean, at some point, you know, a lot of people ask me this, like, I'm, I'm here to help you. I want to make sure you have success, right? And so I want to give you the best advice. But at some point, people usually get to, you know, I don't know what, 30, 50, 70, 100 units, and they're like, I need to spend more time 
you know, on my marketing or on my owners or, you know, and so at that point, maybe outsourcing your accounting is best, right? And so we want to be a good solution for you because we're very familiar with Live Trust. Everybody in here does something unique. I promise you. There's not one of you that does this 100% the same. Um, but so we work with everybody in your current processes, or maybe we help you become more efficient in those current processes. Uh, but we want to be a solution when it's right for you. So just remember that, yeah. Sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not sure what state you're in, and I don't know every law and every regulation for every state. Some states allow you to allow your owners to go in the negative knowing that they have reservations coming. Or you can use that statement as an invoice to your owner and say, you need to pay me some money. You don't pay them. That's good. As long as you're, I, that is not true. Uh, if you're in a state like North Carolina, because they have very strict laws about the, around this, then you would need to be on a cash base system so that you could post that invoice to the owner, but it will show up on hold, right? Do I have this right? It shows up as a hold. You hold the invoice, so it's there, but it doesn't actually make them have a negative amount on their account because you haven't paced it. Top left? No. The cash base do not have a dashboard that show you your assets on one side and your liabilities on the other. Cash base don't have that. Yeah, no. But I thanks for reminding me about Live Manager. I don't think about that because I'm not in the Live Manager system. I don't think about it. But that's a great suggestion. Yeah. So I'm going to summarize because they're recording this, but she's saying to post that vendor invoice to Live Manager, and then it'll be completed but not pushed to Live Trust until the owner has a balance to pay it. Right? Right. You don't want negatives in your trust account. You want to make sure that you have enough funds in your trust bucket to cover all the stakeholder balances. Yeah. So if you, yeah, absolutely. So if you have implemented reserves in your system, so your owners have reserves on their account, then you would could use the reserves to pay that vendor bill and then replenish the reserves when the owner has their next reservation. And that's something you could turn on anytime, the reserves. You can turn it on anytime. Great. Good. Any other questions on that? Oh, more questions, Ruby. Well, if an owner, I mean, if folks were a little desperate for their account to close and it's in the negative for some reason, I mean, just a $50, $75, how, I mean, 
You could call the owner and say, hey, you owe me 50 bucks, send a check, or you as the manager gets to cover that. That will be your responsibility. I would create, I would recommend, so she's asking if you have an owner with a negative amount, they're gone, they're not in your portfolio anymore, but they have this balance lingering and they're never going to pay it. That's your responsible as a manager to cover that. And so you're going to create, my recommendation is to create an expense that's going to be from the manager to that owner for that amount. Right, that is correct. So, so if you did full manager disbursements every month, you'll recognize that expense at the end of the month. That's correct. Another question? There is not a way in live trust currently. I have heard multiple times with Justin sitting here that that is a big request that they would like to be able to attach those invoices to the owner statements in Live Trust, and so I know that that's a request that the development team has received, and so I don't know how much you know. Also, yeah. oh, I didn't know that. Very good. So, yep, sh if you use Live Manager, yeah. so she's saying if you use Live Manager, you can attach a picture of the bill to the work order, and that work order will show up in the owner portal, and the owner can see the picture of the bill there. I didn't realize that. I don't have, I don't know if I have any of my owners that use Live Manager. I don't know. I'm going to have to find out. So this is a So Justice in LiveRes you would do like a CRM email, is that what you were saying? Okay, for your owners. So she's saying in LiveRes a CRM email to the owners that says, Hey, your owner statements are ready and it has a link to the owner portal. And then they can go in there and access that themselves instead of printing everything or, you know, like saving it as a PDF, everything, and emailing each owner individually. This would be a faster way to do that. Definitely more efficient.
Christina, do you know if they're talking about that? Okay. Got a few more minutes. Any more questions? We had we do have a few more minutes. If you have some like lingering questions you would like to cover live trust related. And I might be sitting at that table yeah. out there if that <laughs> happens. <laughs> if you feel more comfortable asking your question in private, that's where we'll be. But I'm happy. I mean, you know, a lot of people learn. Some people come in here just to hear these questions they want to learn from other pain points or other issues people have had. Um, so, you know, it's okay to share. If you have experience, if you have any tips, if you figured out anything, I didn't realize this. I use it so often I don't think about people not knowing this, but it came up here. Uh, we were talking about the Airbnb resolutions, right? Did you know if you copy that Airbnb reservation number from Airbnb where you're looking at the resolution, and paste it in the transaction number of LiveRes, you can choose Airbnb ID from the drop down and look it up that way? No way. Way. <laughs> we use it all the time. You know, it's one of those things like everybody knows this, right? But so there's some little tips like that. So if you have other things that you use, I use control. F, but I have a PC, command F if you have a Mac, for reconcile or deposit grouping all the time. Like everything that you can see scroll through on your screen, you can find by using control F or command F um, on your, to do your deposit grouping. So if you have 87 credit card transactions in one deposit, you can use that control F or command F on your check register to find those transactions. It's very fast. I try to, I, in, unless you want to do a comma. So if you have a transaction that's $1,287.35, if you can do the comma in there, I just search for just the hundreds. It's any part of that number or the guest name or whatever makes sense to you. Uh, but you would have to match it exactly how it looks on the screen. Easy, it makes it really quick. It's a nice feature. I like it a lot. Because sometimes I'm like, oh, what is the fastest way to find 87 credit card trends? Once you find the first one, usually the other ones are very close to it. But honestly, like some of those credit card batches can be long. And so they can kind of bounce around. So I also have a client that likes to refund their guests manually in VRP. Uh, so I, on that one, look for the refunds first so that I know if I need to post a refund <laughs> before I do the rest of the grouping. Yeah. Are they all still active in LiveRes? They just still show up on your list?
So apparently you can charge an owner that's no longer there. <laughs> that's what they were telling him to put an, a Z in front of their name? Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. It's probably listed at towards the bottom now. You probably can leave the X there now if you want. Okay. That means they're inactive. Yeah. So she has to make them active. She's got the owner with the negative balance. She has to make them active again before she can create that expense. It's just a good tip too. That's interesting that you can make them inactive what, if they have a balance. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> All right. Good to know. Well, I appreciate everybody coming in, and, and we had a lot to talk about today. Good discussions. I learned some things myself, so I really appreciate that. Uh, it's been a fun conference. I look forward to seeing everybody tonight, but feel free to stop by the booth uh, if you want to visit with us on your way out. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm.